Hello! So once again, my materials were burning a hole in my pocket, so I decided to seek out the mysterious cave vendor. And once again, I got him selling fist weapons. This time, it was a lot harder to get the spawn. I feel like when I made the video about it uh, a few weeks ago or whatever, I was getting the bounty like once every, I don't know, third or fourth login. This time, it was more like one in ten, if not even less frequent than that. Um, so was a little harder to get than it was last time, but it still paid off better because last time I didn't know that he would eventually change what he was selling. So I had planned to do 300 upgrades. I ended up only getting 180 done before he stopped selling fists. This time, uh, to circumvent that, right when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, so I'm going to fill my inventory, dump my inventory, fill it, dump it, fill it, dump it, fill it, dump it. So right now I have Within a few minutes, I gained access to 360 fist weapons with just spending some gold and not needing any mats at all. So I think that's actually more than... I think I would need 18,000 of each, so the last set won't be able to be fully upgraded. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and upgrade most or all of 360 fist weapons, see if we get anything good. All right, we're done. After converting some materials, I upgraded all 360 rare fist weapons. Now, you might be wondering why are you upgrading rare fist weapons when there's so many fists in the pool? There's 14 of them, and Fist of Vaz is a little bit weighted poorly, so you got a slightly better than 1 in 14 chance of getting the others, slightly worse of getting this one. Um, and it's because... They're notoriously hard to roll well. You get things like life per spirit spent and spirit regen on fist weapons. So it's really hard to get good ones. In addition, uh, Fist of Az and Wong Kim Lao both have really meaningful legendary powers. So everything on the primaries could be perfect, but I would still not use them if they have a poor power. So they're hard to roll well, but there are seven of them that I'm interested in this season. So that is half of the pool are acceptable um, items I would be really stoked about getting perfectly rolled. Two of them just for key farming, so not that big of a deal, but still would be pretty cool to get perfect primals of them. Uh, Wong Kim Lao I use just for GR farming. I'm using uh, Fist of Az and Lion's Claw for pushing Yuliana's at the moment. I'm just about done with that for the season, but if I don't die with the gear, uh, that I want to take the my best gear into non-season. So I still would absolutely love to find better of those all the way to the end of the season. And then Shenlongs is for pushing this season. So if your goal is just to get the best Shenlongs Relentless Assault you can get, I would absolutely say Reforge with Bounty Mats. Um, but where I have this big pool of fists that I would like to see well rolled, I'm that's why I'm using my upgrade rares on. I actually have pretty well rolled pushing and speed farming, uh, hand crossbows, mighty one-handed mighty weapons, and 
uh, Istvans for the barbs. So I think fist weapons are going to be the last holdout on that category. Anyway, we got six that I decided to keep. So that's six out of 360. So about 60 on average to get one that I thought was worth keeping. And honestly, most of these I probably won't even use because I probably have better ones, but they were just like non-trash like this. This is an ancient. It's got good base damage. It's absolute trash because after the decks, it goes super downhill uh, with the life for spirit spent, spirit regen, and the low power. So I just picked these to have a representation of every thing that I'm looking for. They weren't... There was nothing about the stats that made me throw them on the ground, but these I kept because of the stats. So we'll start with the uh, speed farming stuff. I got a rabbit strike that had basically max base damage, so that's pretty nice to have for key farming. Uh, theoretically, if you needed more damage, if you were a rabbit strike while you key farm, you get that. You could cube Kyoshiro's and have maximum on that damage of the Kyoshiro multiplier. Um, and you also get the extra crit damage. I got a Kaioshiro that actually has bad base damage, but if I'm just looking, if I don't care about damage, I'm just looking for speed. This one came with 10% cooldown, so I could go like attack speed, which would ever so slightly make my dashing strikes faster. So theoretically, this might be one that I switch to if I really want to min max my movement of my key farming. And I got two of each Shenlong. So I got Fist of Legend, kind of like the one that I got out of the 180 upgrades I did in the last video. It's just really good base damage dex fit, and then I can roll one other stat when I roll the socket off. Uh, I got one with bad base damage, but came with life per hit. So if I somehow have a perfectly rolled other weapon, um, like amazing base damage, maybe I got damage on my rings, some situation where I don't, it's not the end of the world to have low base damage. Uh, this could be life per hit and either cooldown or area. So just, you probably need a life per hit roll to push, and this has one. So it's worth keeping. We have a middle of the road base damage, but also came with resource. I don't know if that'd be any better than vitality. I haven't put a build together yet to really compare like how much vitality I have on the build. Theoretically, vitality is exactly the same as a dex roll, though. So it's basically 9% damage reduction from the RCR versus, you know, uh, ultimately, I think I'm going to have close to 30k decks by the end of the season on a push build. So basically 3.3% damage versus 9% toughness. And this is probably the best of the things I found. It's just really good base damage, and then I could put either cooldown or area on it. I don't know if the 2% chance to fear is going to be an issue while pushing Tempest Rush where you're just gathering and waiting, gathering and waiting. If something runs away right at the last, right before Cold Pop, that could get super infuriating. But as far as like a nice amount of base damage goes where you just get your cooldown and area from the rings and gloves and such, this could be usable. Could be good.